Hey everyone, welcome. It is Thursday, and you are here with me, Tony Tesler. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I'm going to show you. Um, I'm going to be working with this Art and Bloom bundle tonight. Um, let me just find. I was hoping the video would pop up on its own. Let me do a little refresh, and then I can get going. So um, say hi when you're here. Oh, there I am. Say hi, just so I know you're here. Um, if you're watching on, hey Vicki, if you're watching on YouTube later, give me a comment there. Um, thumbs and hearts are appreciated on either one. Hey Molly. Um, okay, so this is working. Hey Sean, awesome. Okay, so let's get to it. So I got this bundle. Um, it came out with the June catalog, with the annual catalog. Hey Sue. And um, I was very intrigued because this was the first time we had a hybrid bundle. And the hybrid is the embossing folder cuts and embosses at the same time. Um, and you can, maybe you can see that I've used mine only twice and I have little cut marks there. I don't know if it's supposed to do that. I mean, I think it is because I don't know how you would avoid it. Um, but I'm not a fan of that part, but I guess that's just something I'll have to get over. Um, but I thought this was neat. And I know um, Gail did something with the other one. There's a, there's a hybrid bundle in the holiday catalog too. Mary something. I know she was working with that. Um, oops, and I just realized I'm a little bit crooked here. Let me try to see what can I straighten out. I think, I think this will do it. Okay. Um, but before I jump into that, I had two things that I wanted to show you. Um, one was this adorable card from my friend Rose out in California. This is the um, counting sheep bundle and the dies are the thing that are on like while supplies last. Hey Jolie, um, the dies are once they're gone, they're gone. Um, but the stamp set will be available through the end of September. I'm hoping that they'll let us know like when these dies are getting low, like on low inventory, because we do have that inventory report. Um, so I'm going to call them tomorrow and see if they can keep us posted because I don't want it to be like all of a sudden, you know, oh, it's gone. You know, if they can give us some warning, that would be helpful. Um, but this is cute. This is a little note card. And I think she said she made like 27 of them. 35. She made 35 of these. All these little bits and pieces cut out. I don't think I could do it. So, mm, I love it, Rose. Thank you. Now, the other card I wanted to show you, um, this was one I try to play in that craft roulette challenge, or it's like a weekly video um, game show kind of thing. Every Friday night, she's on YouTube now, um, Mary Gun Fun. But if you look it up, craft roulette, Friday night, I think it's 7.30 central time or 6.30. I can't remember. But anyway, um, I don't get a chance to play every week, but I like it. So the one for last week was a, you had to do a fun fold. Um, there's different parameters. And I already posted this on my blog. Um, but I wanted to show you this because um, dun, 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 I got new postage stamps. Uh, hello, lighthouses. This means um, now I have something to send my lighthouse cards out with. So I love these because, yeah, I do have one or maybe three different lighthouse sets. Um, this one is from Maryland. This is Thomas Point Shoal. I don't know that it's still up. But anyway, I thought it was cool, and I always get different um, postage stamps. So now I'm going to send this to someone. Actually, I'm going to do that. Um, let's make a note of that. I'm going to do a drawing um, like from all the comments from tonight, and I'm going to mail you this card and using one of my new lighthouse stamps. So let me, um, actually, let me get a piece of scratch paper and then I can write, start writing my forgets so I don't forget. Because I love making all the cards, but you know, they pile up. So we will do this. So comment. I'll say live comments, okay? Because um, I will do the drawing like as soon as I hang up um, for Lighthouse card. 
awesome. And I'm not going to mess around with trying to like do the name picker or something because I don't have good luck with that live. Um, but I thought it was cool. So the other poster stamps I got were Raven. Now this on the USPS site, it's actually the Raven. It's um, an American Indian or, oh, I forget what you're supposed to call it. Ugh. All right. Not that. Um, I can't remember what it is. Anyway, there's a story about Raven and all that, but this drew my eye because of being from Baltimore, like Raven, Edgar, Edgar Allan Poe. So, um, yeah, I can't remember the Native Americans. That's what I'm trying to think of it. Oh my God, I feel like they're terrible. Um, but anyway, that's why I got these Ravens because it made me think of Edgar Allan Poe. Um, so new stamps to play with. I'm very excited about those. All right. So we're going to give this one away and this is a book binding fold card. I know I've done these before. Um, you just, you know, score it at four and a quarter and then regular five and a half. And, um, this time I poked holes and tied some linen thread through it and I tied knots in it. So it kind of looks like, um, you know, the rope that they use on ships and stuff. So yes, Julie, I will definitely find a link and share it for you. All right. Link for, it's called book binding card. Yep. And I think I've also called it a book fold. So yeah, I will post that. Cool. All right. Um, so back to this bundle, hybrid bundle. Um, the dies cut the cut and emboss in the embossing folder at the same time. So we're just going to get into it. Um, the first card I want to make is going to be a five by seven card. All right. And um, I'm using fresh freesia. Let me put this under here. Now I am going to have to drag up my big, um, my big shot because this embossing folder, um, it doesn't fit in the little die cut machine that I have for my tabletop, which, you know, that's expected. Um, so five by seven card, this was 10 by seven folded in half. Then I have another piece that is, oh, I've got a bunch of pieces here. This piece for the inside is probably six and three quarters. Yep. Six and three quarters by four and three quarters. That's going to go on the inside. Um, then I have two layers of freesia. One, this one going on the bottom. This is, hmm, should be six and three eighths. Yep. Six and three eighths by four and three eighths. And then this layer is what I'm going to die cut, run through the die cut. This is four by six. Yep. And I did this on purpose because this is the biggest size that you can really get through this embossing folder, like from tippy top, you know, you don't want to, you don't want to butt it up against the part that doesn't have a design like right here. That's about as far up as we want to go. All right. So let's first run this through. Um, I already ran it through with some white, um, and die cut these pieces and it really is very 3d. Okay. So your every big shot or die cutting machine is a little bit different. Yours may be tighter than mine. Um, mine's not that tight, but with these thick folders, it's always tricky. Sometimes I have to use the, um, the plastic thing that's the plate for uh, 3d folders. And other times, like in this case, I just use the regular plate. So you're going to have to play around with yours, you know, your particular machine. Um, but so how to use this. So the dies, you can either stamp first and then die cut and run it through. Um, I, I don't know how you would do that. Yeah, with this, I think this is just going to cut and emboss it. I think the stamping and die cutting has to be done separately because I just don't know how you would line it up. Um, but what we do is we line it up. Not this way. Let me see. There's a way you have to figure out where it, where it fits. All right. I was right the first time. Okay. So it sits right on here. It's it like, it doesn't click, but it kind of sits in here and locks into place. So then you want to put your paper over top of this 
and I'm just eyeballing to get it kind of in the center and then you flip through um, or flip this over you want to run it through like this now all right I flipped it over and then ran it through and somehow I loosened my hold on this the first time I did it and my die got loose from the track that it was supposed to be on and it didn't cut it nice it was jacked up so just keep it I've still got a good grip on it so you just want to keep keep it a hold and we'll run it through all right so let me drag this uh, my big thing up um, now my big shot I'm just gonna use one plate and this is my multi-purpose platform this is really old school with the tabs um, but I have, you know, one, I have two of these, so I'm not throwing them out. All right. And then one plate. Now it is going to be tight, but don't worry. It's going to go through just fine. Okay. And let me get this out of the way. Ooh. And I'm going to need those. And I'm just going to keep using the big shot tonight. All right. Now let's pull this off and ooh, see that really cuts it perfectly mine before um the one that i messed up it was just really off and that bothered me um but so this cuts it out really i love the embossing um i am going to play around with this some more but i just i like the idea that you can do it you know one and done um now i'm going to save these fresh freesia pieces because I'm going to sponge some white on them and make a different card. Um, and see here, we've got, you can see the little cut marks that it's making in the embossing folder. I mean, that's the way it's supposed to work. So what can I say? Sean, where can you get a 3d plate? Um, the ones that they have in the catalog allegedly work. They are the same exact size. Cause I did ask about this. I called Stampin' Up. Um, they are the exact same size as the old blue plate, which is what I have. So the one that's in the catalog, they swear is the same size. And it should work um, with the new cut and emboss machine or the big shot like I have. So I'm going to put this away for now. Um, this piece, let's get back to our card. So I wanted the card to go like this. Let's put this in the middle. So our white piece we're putting on the inside. Yeah, that 3D plate was a concern for me um, because I just didn't trust that it was going to be exactly the same like thickness. So when that first came out, um, actually when they were talking about it last year, because remember how the machines didn't come out last year, but I was all over them asking if it was the same size because I wanted to you know, get one if I needed it. All right. So this is how I am imagining this card going. I'm going to glue this our embossed, um, and die cut piece. I'm putting this right on the fresh freesia layer. And the reason why I'm adding this, boop, the fresh freesia layer was a, since I knew I was going to be able to see through these cutout holes, I wanted it to be the same color underneath the fresh freesia. Like if I had this white layer, that would be stark. So here's my plan is these other ones that I cut out. I'm going to do some ink blending and sponging on them. And then I'm going to pop them up over here. Okay. But knowing that they're popped up, that means you can see like when you turn the card, say this is popped up, you can still see under here and I didn't want that to be white. So that's why I used fresh freesia behind it because I wanted it like a solid freesia. All right. And let me get some, got that glue on me. I need to be using my other glue. Um, I need a my sponge or not my sponge, my blending brush. Okay and the fresh freesia. So I'm going to do purple, um, no yellow center. So these are my old markers, Daffodil Delight. And I didn't know what color I was going to want. Um, probably a little both that, Ooh, that's very dark. Daffodil Delight medium. Hmm. 
All right, I think it's gonna be light. So I just wanna do like boop, boop, boop. Maybe I'll do some dark around the other edge. Just, just hitting the raised up bits on here. Then I'm gonna go just the, yeah, the dark just like around the other half, just to give it a little bit of difference. Good enough, just a little bit of color. All right, now I'm gonna take my Freesia, Fresh Freesia, and I really want this like right in the center. I didn't wanna come in from the edges. And just the fact that it's a little bit light, that's perfect, that's really what I want. All right, and then more, boop, boop, on this one. So I like this because with the white flowers, you can color them, you know, any color you want. All right, now a greeting. I think I'm gonna use one of these long ones. Uh, what I thought was really cool. So I've been into um, like making mini scrapbooks and these little journals and stuff like that. You see a lot of tickets in that. And one of the dies in this die set is to, you can make your own tickets. So I thought that was really cool. I, um, I die cut a bunch of those. So I may use that. I think I'm gonna use the long greeting on this. But let me uh, clean this. Notice I finally ran my rag through the washing machine. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, Sean, I'm not buying a, the new big machine either. Um, the blue plate, I think it may have been like an insert or maybe it just, you know how some things don't really stand out in the catalog. I know we had that blue plate for a while and it was called a 3D plate, um, but it wasn't really apparent that we really needed it, I think. I think I took it or I got it just because some of the 3D embossing folders, they started getting thicker and thicker and I couldn't get it through. Like I had to make so many different shims depending on what folder and that annoyed me. So I was like, fine, you can have my $10, I'll get it. And then I liked it, because I was like, oh, this makes it so much easier. Um, but it's only needed for the 3D folders. And if you don't mind building a shim, then I don't know that you would need it, you know? All right, let's not block off our comment here. So live comments are going to get the, do the drawing. All right. So this, I want to tie some of this ribbon and I'm going to go right across here. I'm not worried about it because I'm covering it up. I'm going to put these, you know, pop these right up on top. So soft succulent ribbon and I'm going to tie, I'm going to tie that like over here. Um, I know there are ribbon saving techniques. I'm not really interested in that. So I just whip it around the whole thing and it's easier for me. Plus I like the looks of it. All right, so scooch it along. This is about where I wanna tie it. I'm gonna start off with my knot. And then once I have my knot, now I can tie my bow. And I always end up turning my piece upside down to tie my bows and then I have better luck with the, um, the tails laying kind of how I want them. This one wants to go sideways, so you know what? It's gonna be sideways. I'm not gonna fight it. I am going to keep pulling it though. I want it the same. I want these loops the same length. Okay, yeah, that's gonna do. All right, trim, 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 trim. All right, now let's mount this to our base card. And I wanna pop this whole thing up. So what I'm gonna do, I don't want this right in the middle. I want it down, yeah, right here. All right, that looked a little not, not straight. Okay, let's go to my, um, this stuff that I'm still using. This is like quarter inch foam tape. 
which I think I, yeah, I don't think I am going to the Dollar Tree on Saturday. I'm meeting my friend Peggy there and um, I haven't been in a while because somebody, I think it was Sharon told me that they have this foam tape at the dollar store. So I am going to check and see what they have. Because if I can get a big roll of this for a dollar, that'll be awesome. I think I got this off scrapbook.com or Simon Says Stamp. I can't remember. But I do like it for things like this. It goes quicker than me trying to um, get down a bunch of dimensionals. All right. This is probably excessive, but that's all right. So I'm going to peel these up and then I am going to add liquid glue on top of this only because this foam tape is, whoa, it's super sticky. And if I don't get it down exactly right, there's no wiggle room. So I need to add the glue to add some wiggle room. And then that increases my chances of getting it straight. So, and you can do this with any tape. Like if you have washi tape, that's not really sticking, put some glue on it, whether it's a liquid glue or from a glue stick, anything dimensionals. If you're finding they're not sticking, add some glue. Oh, which by the way, I know I added a note, um, on these glimmer pieces that I cut last week, but I don't know if anybody saw it or everyone, but I found that I could not stick things to this. Nothing wants to stick on top of this shimmery stuff. This was the, um, I can't even remember the name of it. Um, but it's a celebration. Be dazzling. All right. Oh, let me just scooch this. Make sure I've got that straight. Okay. I'm gonna hold that there for a minute, but yeah. So the be dazzling paper when I was trying to add stuff to it on top of it it was not sticking so I had to add glue so just keep that in mind all right so that looks good mmm I am liking that all right and now let's put um, I already pre die cut some of the leaves I didn't want to spend the time to stamp them um, so in the dies there's these these will cut out the stamped images, these plain ones, and then these cut out the with the holes in them. So I just cut out a bunch of these with the soft succulent. And um, so I just need to place these here and then I will know where do I want to put my, um, my leaves. All right, so, and I'm gonna use glue dots for these. So I'm going to put this on the top side of the leaf and pull it off so I can tell I'm going to put one here and some of these that didn't um, poke all out. I'm okay with that. I'm leaving it and I may have just ripped this. Oh, look at that. Yep. Throw that one out. Let's try that again. Is that the same one? Oh no, right here. Sometimes these are, these glue dots are really strong. All right, let me pry it off this time. Cause I don't want to rip that again. Okay. Mm. And I'm going to add this one. Oh yeah. I like that. All right. So that's going to go there. I think I'm going to add one over here. And I think that's going to be it. Just the three. I don't want to get too crazy with it. You know, what else would be cool is, um, the leaves from the ephemera kit, those gold leaves. If you wanted to add more gold, that would be cool too. All right, let's get some dimensionals and I've got a new pack and I'm just going to go right from the middle. like an animal as long as you use them all up it doesn't matter in what order plus they're easier to grab like this but I'm not the boss of you you pick your dimensionals however you want 
All right, and let's put one right there. Why not? Since those didn't pop all out, that's going to get hidden anyway. All right, and then these we're just going to place back over the holes that we cut out. Um, and I just have to line it up right. Okay. And if it's off a hair, it's not really going to matter much because again, if you look at it sideways, you're not going to see a white background. You're going to see the freesia. It's all going to blend in. So that's really why I like the freesia on freesia layers for that. All right, let's put this one on. I love these colors. And then this guy. Now the greeting for this, there is a really long die in there. Um, I don't know that I'm going to use that. Let me line this up. Okay. I wasn't determined that, you know, I wasn't dead set on, oh, I have to use that. Cause I think that's just a little bit too much white for me. Mm. And then this is definitely too much. I really wanted just a little something. Um, so what we had, thanks for making me happy. Never not loving you, dear friend, you're a rare find. Um, but what I think, so I already mounted this thanks. Um, I just wanna cut out the thanks and have that. So I'm gonna stamp that in soft succulent. And I'm just going to do that on a scrap of white and cut out just the thanks. Okay, so it doesn't matter. There we go. I had ripped that. And let me just wipe this off real quick because I think I'm going to use that later. All right, and then let's just cut this by hand. This could also be happy birthday, um, happy anniversary. I think flowers are pretty generic, um, you know, all occasion. All right, and then, yeah, just a little boop. Let's put a little mini dimensionals there. All right, and then right in the corner. Now, I thought about adding um, pearls or something. Um, I wasn't quite um, set on anything. So, mm, the in color jewels, let's do those because I was so happy to finally get them. And we're gonna do some of the soft succulents. When these were out of stock for so long, like when they first came out, and it took me so long to get them. And now it's like I hardly use them because I forgot about them. All right, I'm gonna put one here and then a big one and a little one up here. So, mmm. Yeah, I like that. Those are sparkly, like iridescent kind of. So that's our like tone on tone um, with cutting out the flowers. And like I said, these flowers, I mean, look how detailed that really is pushed up really 3d. Um, I think what I'm going to do is sponge a little bit of white on the tops of these and make a separate card. So I like that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So five by seven, that's our first card. Now I feel like I've got stuff everywhere. Oh, um, next I wanted to do something that I had a few little scraps of, um, designer series paper left. So I wanted to use them up. All right, let me put this in a pile. So I'm using magenta madness. This is last year's color and these are actually last year's 
designer papers, but I wanted to use them because they're pretty. Why not? Um, so regular, this is five and a half by eight and a half. Magenta Madness. I'm going to fold this. And this one's going to go like that. Then we've got um, four by five and a quarter for the inside. And black is, I think this might be, I may have gone down three eighths of an inch. Oh, yep. So this is four and one sixteenth by five and, oh, wait a minute. Is that even going to work right? This looks like it's too long. No. All right. So it's five and a half minus three sixteenths. So five sixteenths. So five and five sixteenths by four and one sixteenth. I know that's dumb, but sometimes I like the three sixteenths inch border. And then this one I cut just an eighth of an inch down. So the white should be three and fifteen sixteenths. <laughs> and then five and three sixteenths. And I am going to have to um, write those down. You know, I will post those on my blog. That's where I've been putting all my measurements is on my blog. All right. So just so we see how this is going to go. Um, oh, and I'm going to have to stamp some of the flowers and die cut them. Yep. All right. So I've got this piece. This was just a little scrap and I um, did the stitched rectangle die cut. And so that's going to go down. Um, I've got this little scrap. This was left over. This is the beautifully penned from the celebration pieces. Oh, that goes this way. And then I'm going to have this piece come over here a little bit. I saw something similar on Pinterest. That's what made me, um, when I saw these scraps of paper and then this part, I'm going to rip and I'm putting that like under here. So actually let me get this going going to put a little bead of glue right there. And this I'm just eyeballing just to kind of make sure it's staying straight, straight ish. All right. Yep. That's that. Um, let me go ahead and glue this down. It's a struggle for me to remember to use glue versus tape. Cause when I'm putting pieces together like this, I still want to use tape and I can, you're going to see me use both. That's just that. All right. So that's there. This is going to go here. Oh, and I ran this through with the stitched greenery die after I die cut their stitched rectangle. I don't know if I said that. Um, but I like that even just for that little bit, that's going to peek out. I like it. All right. So this is going to go here. Let's just tape this on or glue this down. And this is just flat. The only thing I'm really going to pop up on this is, um, Actually, I'm going to put this up a little bit is the flowers. All right. And then this is going to go like here. Only I'm going to rip that too. I want both of those edges ripped. And I like the white core showing. Some people don't. That is personal preference. Oops. All right. I feel like that went a little higher, but that's okay. All right. Now let's stamp our flowers and cut them out. And I am going to make room for my big shot again. So I did check the die um, to make sure that this, 
The flower die will fit on your mini cut and emboss, but you really have to um, you really have to position it like just right. Like it's it barely fits on here. So, eh. I'm not that wild about it if I have to be like that precise, you know, if there's a risk that, oh, you're going to mess it up. Um, I'm not really a fan of that. So I will be using the dies. I will be using these just with my big shot. All right, let me get all this out of the way so I can stamp. I feel like I have to stamp these all together or die cut them. Um, no, wait, where'd my stamp go? Oh, duh, right here. All right, so I would need a black ink that um, that is not going to wreck my photopolymer. So I'm going to go in with the Versafine. And I feel like this is the wrong scrap of white. I don't want to be that close. All right, let's go with this. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right, I may sh may have needed. Oh, how in the world? All right, how did I get that all over? Good. All right, water and I need to clean myself up with this because I don't want this. Uh, to end up on my project. All right, let me get this. This is just alcohol. That was ridiculous. All right, and I do need some more water, I can tell, on my, um, my chamois. I tell you, I rinsed this out and got it ready, like right before I went live. And it dries up quick. All right, so just rubbing this, getting this black ink off. And I'm gonna set this off there. I don't know if I'm finished with that yet or not. Hmm, undecided, but I do want to do the thanks for making me happy. And I'm going to do that in black as well, because that's really going to stand out nicely. All right, this time I'm going to try not to somehow get it everywhere. I've got to just drag this a little closer to my face. I do like this black ink, though. Okay. Mmm. Yeah, nice. All right, let's put that off to dry. And look, I did it again. I wonder if it's on the lid. Ugh, I can't be trusted with this. And I'm gonna have to go back with the alcohol and clean my block off. I can see that. Hoy, all right. So, Hopefully this will be dry, dry enough to run it through my die cut without making more of a mess. Let me check. It looks fine. Okay, looks good. All right. I'm gonna drag these. So I wanna add the inside, like the color. Let me bring these in. Um, this is a distinctive set as well, distinctive. 
which I really do like. Now this, um, I put packing tape on this. I got that little hint from Sue and Gail. Just because it keeps your plastics together. All right, peeling these off. And let's get the Magenta Madness. All right, now which one is this? Boop, boop, boop. All right, right there. All right, let's see how dark this is going to be. Mm, okay. Not terribly. All right, I don't think I got that on perfectly straight, but that's okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, nice. So it's just to give it a little color. And I got it all over the block. And I will have to clean these better um, after. All right, and then we got this one. All right, I'm just trying to keep it kind of like locked in place from the die cut just so it doesn't move around. And I'm just trying to get it like kind of close to center. Mm, I like it. Yeah, I do want to make sure I get it all out of all these nooks and crannies. And then one more. Put this back in. So this all started from those two little scraps of designer series paper that caught my eye. All right, so whatever inspires you. Uh, that looks good enough. Nice. I'm happy with that. Plus I like pink and black. I would also like, mmm, pink and orange. I like those together. I think that would be um, something good to try as well. All right, and now I'm not going to put any ribbon or anything on here. Maybe a few gems or something. Um, but so I'm going to glue this on flat with just my regular Tombow. And then I am going to dimensional these. All right, so we've got greeting. I love the black and white and, hmm. This is longer than I expected. You know what, I want two, so I'm gonna pop this up too. Yeah, at first I was going to have this greeting further down, but now I like it like cutting across here and down. So, oop, little smudgy smudgy. So I want to have two of these. Boop. I don't want to cover up all of this. Actually, you know what? Maybe... I'm going to put this right under here. Nope. Or maybe go right over top of it. All right. I'm leaving it. That's it. Okay. And then let me grab the um, in color, these ones. So in color square gems. Mm -mm -mm. 
these are the ones that are just jade misty moonlight magenta madness cinnamon cider and bumblebee these look kind of um flat i mean they're still sparkly they're still faceted so you get like that sparkle but like the um, bumblebee ones that looks like a little lighter than the regular bumblebee but all right so let's do you know what the black dots would look good too but i am set on using these and i like them i like to turn them and put it like a diamond so we'll do a big one and a little one and then a little one Boop, right up here so that might be really too much pink but I like it and again I can see um, pink and orange together I would I do like that I've done melon mambo and pumpkin pie together before and I do really like that this magenta I think might go better with even mango melody because that's um, kind of orangish too so yeah so we still get peeking out of that stitched greenery just a little bit we see little bits of all the designer papers and then our flowers and I think for extra shimmer sparkle I can't reach it now but we could get the wink Stella and put this on yep okay next um mm -mm -mm. now i wanted to go in a different direction um and still do some die cutting just of flowers and then popping them up i'm probably going to die cut them yeah out of vanilla this time so my choices i wanted to use some green and that was determined by how much paper I have. So I have the most of soft sea foam. So that's what we're using. All right. And this time, so this is five and a half by eight and a half, just my regular standard fold. And then I've got this four by five and a quarter for the inside. that in there right now and you know what before I do the rest of the stamping I should stamp these um, flowers again so this time I wanted to stamp and emboss in gold and that's what I forgot to get out was my new um, my gold embossing powder which I am very happy with it's not sparkly like the gilded that I have from Brutus Monroe, but it's definitely brighter than the old stuff I had before. I ended up throwing all that old business away. All right, so I'm doing Versamark. And if I didn't get this um, stamp entirely clean, some of the black ink is going to come up. Um, but since I'm embossing it in gold, no one's going to see that. So it's not the end of the world. And I'm not noticing it a lot anyway. All right, so scrap of very vanilla. And I just want to oh, lay on, really push on that. There we can see it. You see the shadows of black? That's just from leftover from not cleaning it perfectly great. But not the end of the world. All right, so gold embossing powder. And you would have thought I didn't use the embossing buddy at all. That does not look great, but we're going to go with it. All right, let me get all this back in here. And then I'm going to heat this up.
Nice. All right. Now, so let's do this and this and find post-it note and the die. gold and vanilla. All right. Okay. So we've got this and this, and I'm using a little bit of my scalloped lace. Um, in this stamp set, there are these uh, stripes and little dots, and those are good for backgrounds. So what I'm going to do is the stripe, and this was um, soft sea foam. So I could use the Versamark ink pad as well and still get the tone on tone look. Um, I'm, using, I'm using the ink. So Seafoam on Seafoam or Versamark on Seafoam. So I want this right along the edge. So I'm just gonna open it up and I, have to, I actually have to bring it closer to me because I want this right on the edge. All right, hold that. Nice, this is very juicy. That's gonna lighten up, don't worry. It'll lighten up by tomorrow, I should say. Remember, I re-inked these pads recently and I may have gone a little crazy, a little cray cray. All right, so that's gonna go there. I'm having my, this layer that I, trim down this is five and a half by three and three quarters and I ran that through with the embossing folder already so that's going to peek out like that and I want to tape some of this ribbon so I'm going to use the um, tear and tape and I'm putting it right down on the bottom edge across the whole thing and then I'm going to peel it up and lay my scallop lace trim right on it if I can get this peeled up there we go and I have doubled this up in the past let me see if I can do that nope I'm just gonna put it one one layer but I've done like a double so it's like um, tiered so you see two layers of the ruffles. Um, but actually this is, I ordered the wrong kind of crochet. I ordered the new, no wait, that's not it. Um, where is it? I thought I was ordering this. Well, I wanted both of these, but somehow I forgot to put this on my last order. So this was the new, um, it's called Diamond Weave. This is from the new catalog. It's sturdier. It's thicker. It feels like somebody hand crocheted it. So that would be interesting to use. But for this one, I wanted the scallopy, the lace. All right, so just that little bit peeking out. I like it. And then I want to glue this right on here. You could pop this up if you want, but I think I'm going to pop up those flowers. Um, and let's just go ahead and use this. And I want to, I'm turning this upside down because I want to be able to see to get this right at the very tippy top. There we go. And then just squeeze, press, hold. 
All right. I like it a lot. So this I wanted just here. And mm, these I just want like over here. And I'm not worried that you can see this one. Like, I like that. All right, but I do want to put a touch of color. I want something very light. So I'm thinking petal pink. And let's see, um, what was I using before? Oh, I feel like I need to brush this off a little bit because it's got like some magenta or something on it. Oh, your Versamark has glitter in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, mine had glitter, embossing powder, like all colors of embossing powder. It was kind of a mess. But eventually, um, the only reason I got rid of it was chunks started falling out of it. Like it started coming apart. All right. I must have really. Hmm. All right. Let's see how this is going to work. Okay. So I just want a little bit of something right in the center there. So I've got petal pink. Yeah. And that looks good with the, the gold too. All right, just a touch of color. And then you know what? Let's do this too. Just the edges maybe. Yeah, just so it's not so stark. I like it. I like it a lot. This one's definitely gonna get regular pearls, I can tell you. All right, so more popping up, more dimensionals. I really like this ticket die. I think that's gonna um, that's gonna be a lot more fun than I realized. Let me put this on, and I'm not worried about any of the flower leaves. Adding these, you could certainly, you know, like some extras. You could certainly put some on if you wanted. All right, so let's do, so I don't necessarily want to put them in the same order that they are already, um, just because I want it to be different. All right, smash. I love it. All right, and now pearls, regular pearls. Um, here we go, basic pearls. The gilded gems would look nice too, but that would definitely be like more gold. And I want, um, I want more vanilla kind of. So let's do, um, let's do one here and then a medium and a small. Oop. And that one wanted to almost stick on my finger. Okay. And I am happy with that. So this will definitely lighten up. That is the pad being super duper juicy. Um, but this would go any green. Like I said, I only picked this green because I had like a whole pack of it. And my pear pizzazz, I'm down to a couple sheets of that. Um, but I like it. And this was petal pink, just um, ink blended on. So you can't choose a favorite tonight, Julie. Well, that is my goal to make it a tough decision. <laughs> oh, but all right. So here we go. So we had our five by seven card. This was the fresh freesia and the soft succulent. And with that ribbon, then we had magenta madness and black. I really like this. Um, and then we had soft sea foam and petal pink. So, um, as soon as I sign off of here, I'm going to go on the desktop and I will do a, um, a wheel thing. I don't think I'm going to do it live. Like I'll just take a screenshot of the winner and then I'll post that. So any comments, you're going to get this, um, the book binding card. And I am going to find the link to, um, a tutorial for that. So, okay. 
thanks you guys for being here um we only have about another week and a half in august um and you know my hostess code if you order a hundred dollars you're gonna get to pick one of your a hostess set that you want so where is that oh that's right here you're gonna get to pick one of these if you place a $50 order, you're going to get this month. It's the evening evergreen, um, open weave or Chevron weave ribbon. Um, it's on my blog, but so that's that. And then everybody who orders, no matter what your order is, you're going to get put in a drawing at the end of the month for this, um, special host for celebration set in your words. All right. All right. That's it. Um, have a good week and I will see you guys next Thursday. All right. Thanks. Bye.